Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to ask, I was going to ask everyone to please rise, but you're already, already risen. So uh, please uh, prepare for the presenting of colors and the playing of our national anthem. Good morning, and what a beautiful morning it is. My name is Nathaniel Guest, and I'm the executive director of the Colebrookdale Railroad Preservation Trust. On behalf of the family of Colebrookdale Railroad volunteers, staff, donors, and supporters, our friends at the Redevelopment Authority of the County of Berks, and all those whose work has led to the good news today that we share, welcome. In addition to our staff and volunteers who join us today, we'd like to welcome Ken Lawrence, Jr. of the Montgomery County Commissioners, Commissioner Lawrence. Frank Deary, Borough Council President and former Mayor Marion Deary. Charles Heller, Boyertown Borough Councilman. Jeffrey Casino, also Boyertown Borough Councilman. Lori Carnes, the Boyertown Mayor. Megan Cagliola on behalf of Representative Tracy Penicek of the 147th District. <laughs> Representative Joe Cerisi of the 146th District. Some other guests I'd like to uh, welcome into Crystal Sites with the Pennsylvania Americana region, Eileen Dautrick of the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce, Peggy Lee Clark of the Potsdam Area Economic Development Corporation, some Colbrookdale Railroad board members and volunteers, Greg Herb of the National Association of Realtors and the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, and Dave Graybill, Executive Director of the Pottstown Health and Wellness Foundation. Please join me in a round of applause. I'd also like to welcome the Colbrookdale Railroad volunteers and supporters who have joined us today. I'd like to ask you for a round of applause in recognizing them. Without them, we would not be here today. One hundred and fifty-seven years ago, a ragtag band of former soldiers just home from the Civil War gathered along the banks of the Schuylkill River eight miles south from where we stand today 
and they were united in purpose to build a railroad line through what would prove to be exceptionally difficult and unforgiving terrain, driven by an iron will, to connect to the rest of the world, our region, and the exceptional metal that lies within the hills that surround us, they couldn't begin to imagine the toil that lay ahead. They worked with picks and shovels, black powder, horse-drawn wagons, seven days a week for nearly four years, fording dozens of creeks, climbing mountains, carving out rock cuts, fighting cholera and exhaustion. About two miles from where we stand at this moment, with Boyertown in sight, their efforts stalled. Unexpectedly, one of the steepest hills along the line that they had yet encountered came right in their path, and their progress was halted by a massive mountain of iron. After all of the work of the previous years, this was a challenge that seemed just a little too much, as their faith in their effort and their abilities to complete it waned, and the prospect for the timely completion of the Colbrookdale Railroad, perhaps the completion at all of the Colbrookdale Railroad, grew dimmer. And just as the sounds of the picks against the hillside went silent and plans circulated to abandon the effort, a new hope emerged. Reinforcements from the friendly Reading Railroad south in Pottstown arrived just in time. While no one doubted there would still be creeks yet to ford and mountains yet to climb, once that critical bit of help that catalytic injection of hope. Once that happened, the wheels began to turn, and they never stopped. Thanks to their efforts and the success that they ultimately found, our region became the crucible for a young America, providing the iron and the steel that made Pennsylvania the keystone in the American states. Nearly a decade ago, it's hard to believe it's been that long, faced with the loss of that venerable connection those soldiers built connecting our communities, Citizens from Pottstown and citizens from Boyertown joined together for an equally formidable task. Many of you here this morning have been a part of that effort since the beginning. And you know we have conquered some pretty difficult terrain. And no doubt there are creeks yet to ford and mountains yet to conquer. But today we celebrate this critical bit of help, this catalytic injection of hope. And we're grateful for the opportunity to chug ahead. So to Senator Casey, Representative Dean, Commissioner Arkush, Commissioner Leinbach, Commissioner Lawrence, all of our elected officials, the Redevelopment Authority, and most of all, our volunteers and supporters, I say thank you and full steam ahead. I'd also like to ask you to thank, uh, join me in thanking the Naval Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Color Guard, the Boyertown Area Senior High School for providing the music this morning, and Carrie Bauer for providing our sound system. I'd now like to invite to the podium Commissioner Arkush to provide some remarks. Commissioner Arkush is the chair of the Montgomery County Commissioners. Good morning. Well, good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day to be here with all of you for this wonderful celebration. Nathaniel, thank you for that wonderful story. He always has the best stories, doesn't he? He always finds the story that, that just fits to the event perfectly. And your vision and your dedication to this railroad has just been incomparable. And I don't think any of us would be standing here without you. So kudos to you. So as you heard, I am Val Arkush, Chair of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners, and I want to thank Senator Casey for his leadership to secure this funding that will benefit both Montgomery and Berks counties. And I know you'll be hearing from my colleague, Commissioner Leinbach, I think right after me. Uh, this is going to go a long way, literally and figuratively, to strengthen that iron that unites our counties along the tracks of the Colebrookdale Railroad. Rehabilitating 8.6 miles of track and fixing 14 bridges will strengthen our infrastructure and our economy. Not only is this project expected to create hundreds of short-term jobs, it will also create new permanent jobs, sustain existing jobs, and support more than 100 downstream jobs in related industries. It is also a win for our climate. Since this project is anticipated to remove more than 12,000 trucks from our local highways each year. 
Overall, it is expected to result in $67 million in short-term stimulus impact for our region. And I know that that kind of investment is very warmly welcomed these days. We are excited to see this important infrastructure project move forward. That's because it contributes to the ongoing efforts to support local businesses and economic activity in Pottstown and Western Montgomery County. Activity that was really hampered during the last two very difficult years of this pandemic, but we are coming back strong across both of our counties and it's projects like this that help us achieve those goals. This project will enhance and build on work to improve Route 422. Thank you, Representative Cerisi, who's leading a lot of that work. And strengthen the Keystone Employment Economic Plan, known as KEEP, a long-term planning effort to benefit the areas between Pottstown and West Potts Grove. Improving the rail line will also give our residents and visitors more opportunities to enjoy this beautiful Colebrookdale Railroad and the amenities of Pottstown's Gateway Tourism and Recreation District. This includes the carousel at Pottstown, Manitani Green Mini Golf Course, Potts Grove Manor, Memorial Park, Riverfront Park, and the Schuylkill River Trail. And all of these areas represent opportunities where the county is invested and the local communities invested. And together we have made great success of all of these enterprises. Reinvestment in our infrastructure provides a lifeline for commerce, tourism, and is a great example of local government collaborating, collaborating with the federal government. We could not do this work without partners like Senator Casey. Infrastructure projects like this require time and investment from federal sources, private sources, local sources, and of course, the amazing volunteers that have been with this railroad every single step of the way. Thank you, Commissioner Leinbach. I, when I first became a commissioner in 2015, it was only a very short few weeks before I heard from Commissioner Leinbach who wanted me to come out to some railroad and have a meeting, and I literally had no idea what he was talking about. And uh, out we came and sat inside one of these beautiful cars where we were served refreshments, and I couldn't even believe that such a thing still existed. So it worked, I was sold, and I've been all in ever since, and it's been a real pleasure to work with you all these years on this project. We can't wait until all of these improvements are done and this project becomes a true reality, and I, will, I look forward to being back to see how the progress is coming along. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Arkush. As I stand here this morning, I look back and I see, sort of see, Eileen Dowtrick, Patrick's blocking her right now, but back in 2007, I remember as a candidate meeting with the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce and having them say to me, one of the most important issues on our agenda is to preserve the railroad going from Boyertown to Pottstown. That was the first that I began to understand the value of this connection for freight initially. And I made a commitment that I would do everything I could to preserve that. Fast forward today. At that point in time, the railroad was on the verge of abandonment. And if it had been abandoned, it would have been gone forever. Most of us are old enough to remember when there were other railroad lines and those lines were ripped up, replaced with trails, and you don't go back. But the story is this line has been preserved. And it's been preserved for both freight and also tourism. Fast forward, three, four weeks ago, I was sitting here at the Colebrookdale talking with Nathaniel uh, actually, it wasn't the Colebrookdale, it was downtown uh, Reading talking about the Colebrookdale. And they said to me, boy, we are getting very concerned. We need some dollars to invest in the bridges and railroad bed. And we've been following this for quite some time. There's some very serious needs. I think it was three days later that Nathaniel called me and he said, 
U.S. Senator Bob Casey just contacted us. Don't tell anybody else, and I didn't. That's amazing for a politician, but I didn't. And $14 million is coming for the federal, from the federal government, and that is what we need to preserve this railroad. How exciting that news was, and I have to tell people, Senator Casey understands the value of rail infrastructure. I won't go sideways, but he also has been a huge help to Montgomery County, uh, Chester County, and Berks County in getting funding for the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority. He understands the value. Thank you, Senator Casey. Three quick things. One, I've already touched on. This money is about the infrastructure that is important to continuing the freight operations here and important to continuing the tourist operation. Number two, this further strengthens the connection of communities. This is not a rail line that's out in the middle of fields going from nowhere to nowhere. This goes from Boyertown to Pottstown, and in Pottstown, it connects with the rest of the world by tying into the Norfolk Southern Lines. It connects two boroughs in two different counties, and it connects the communities along the way. This money makes certain that we are able to continue that connection. But it's also important from an environmental standpoint. As we see the price of a gallon of gasoline go through the roof, it has always been the case and never uh, more the case than it is today that f moving freight by rail is far cheaper per mile per ton than trucking it. And so whenever we have access to rail, that is environmentally sound. That is financially sound. And some of this money is going to help us build out the transload facilities that will allow this rail line through the for-profit arm, Eastern Berks Gateway Railroad, to take even more freight, get it off of our highways, get it onto the rails where it is most efficiently moved through the community. And finally, this is about investment, not just tax dollars. Look around. What you see here would not have been possible with just taxpayer dollars. This is here because of federal investment, state investment, county investment, but it's also here because of private donors and tens of thousands of hours of volunteers. Take any one of those pieces away, and there is no Colebrookdale Railroad. However, in conclusion, this $14 million, as I noted, has come at a very critical time to help us address the serious infrastructure needs on bridges and rail bed and the transload facility. It will make a difference, I believe, for the next 50 to 100 years. Thank you very much, Senator, and thank you, Nathaniel, and the amazing team at Colebrookdale Railroad. some concluding remarks before we move on to a question and answer session. Uh, after our question and answer session, oh, yes, most importantly, <laughs> and I've been standing in the shade, I don't have the excuse of the sun beating down. I'd like to introduce with great pleasure <laughs> U.S. Senator Bob Casey. <laughs> Well, let me start by thanking everyone for being here today, and I want to start by thanking Nathaniel. I said to him on the way in, I took a, a brief look at his uh, biography, noting, and I want to note this publicly, how much we appreciate the fact that he came back to this community. Um, I'm an elected official who is always bragging about Pennsylvania, trying to get people to locate in Pennsylvania, trying to keep young people here. And I harbor no resentment to those who are born and raised and educated here and make their success somewhere else. That's the great uh, 
great American story. But I especially appreciate those who come back. And Nathaniel, I'm grateful that you did that. All those, what year was that? 2012. 2012. Well, thanks for spending a decade back here. And just don't leave, all right? <laughs> Stay here, because you can tell by his dedication and the history that he just outlined, uh, but more important than the history, the future, the promise of the place we're standing uh, here, here in front of today. You don't have to look very far to see that future. So I'm grateful for his leadership. And Commissioner Leinbach mentioned the, the tremendous number of individuals and organizations who made this possible year after year, public and private, uh, but maybe especially those volunteers, that army of people who've made uh, the success you're enjoying possible. But I do want to thank Nathaniel for his leadership and all those at the Colbert Deal Railroad Preservation Trust. I, of course, want to thank both commissioners, Commissioner Arkush, as well as Commissioner Leinbach, and as well as um, Montgomery County Commissioner Ken Lawrence, who's right in front of me here in the middle, standing next to Representative Cerisi. I know that uh, Mayor Carnes and members of the Borough Council are here, and so many others who come before us today and join in this celebration. I know when we talk about this, uh, this effort, it's not the end of the story. There's a lot more to do, but this is a good day to, to pause and to celebrate. And when I think about it, you consider all of the divisions we have across the political world. And I don't have to remind you that I won't, even though I just did by reference to it. But despite those divisions, here we are today, two communities, Boyertown and, and Potts, uh, Pottstown, two counties, Berks County and Montgomery County, two at least, maybe even three, political parties coming together, not just today, but coming together year after year, uh, even over the course of the last generation. And I want to thank both commissioners for their presence here today, all three commissioners, I should say, and the members of, of the, the, uh, the local government who are here as well. So as we celebrate that coming together, that effort to come together in common purpose to focus on the future, to focus on the jobs uh, that, that, that have come and will continue to come to this community because of these efforts, the climate change benefits that we see, the opportunity, the dynamism that is so evident here today. I'm grateful for that. So as we celebrate uh, the $14.7 million in federal funding for this railroad, the rehabilitating and replacing of 14 deteriorating bridges, the rehabilitating of 8.6 miles of a rail track, and the carrying out of improvements that will address dangerous drainage issues. As we celebrate all of that, we of course are focused on that, that the bright promise of that future. So I'm grateful to be with you today. It's not often that I get to come to an event in our state where you have such a, a setting like this that you can see behind me, as well as the uh, the wonderful presentation of the colors and the great band as well, uh, whom I heard just a little bit of as I was arriving. But we're grateful for this. And I think in so many ways, what we're celebrating today is uh, the future of so many communities in our Commonwealth. We don't have to settle for second best or third best. We should settle for and insist upon the best. And the best means you should continue to ask for and, and come to us for federal assistance. Uh, whether it's targeted, whether it's in a program, or whether it's in an annual appropriations bill. Because the people of Boyertown, the people of Berks County, and the people of Montgomery County uh, deserve this. They pay taxes. They make investments. They say to us, here, take our tax dollars and try to make our life better. This is one of the many ways that we can do that. So as much as we celebrate today's investment, uh, the most important thing we celebrate is the promise of tomorrow. Thank you very much, and God bless your work.
Hello again. I think now's my time. So. I'd like to conclude our remarks today by remembering what I think is a particularly fitting and proper sentiment for today's good news. A credo that we shared at our very first meeting, some of you were there, back when we went in Pottstown to discuss this as an idea, back when all of this was just a hope. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir the blood, and probably themselves will never be realized. Make big plans. Aim high and hope and work. Knowing that a noble logical diagram once set forth will never die, but long after we are gone will assert itself with ever-growing insistency. Know that our sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, will do things that would stagger us. Let your watchword be order and your beacon beauty. Thank you. That concludes our formal presentation, so I invite you to mingle. Uh, I've asked the train crew to please uh, man the doors of the train. Uh, we're going to open up the train for uh, view. If you haven't been on board, it's gorgeous. It's also air-conditioned. Uh, there's some great displays on board. Uh, and we'll also be taking a short trip today. My understanding is that Senator Casey will be driving the locomotive, and uh, we're going to head, head south for a short adventure. Uh, you'll, you'll know it's time to go when you hear the locomotive whistle blow, uh, and uh, the, the, the room in the cab is limited, but we also are taking a caboose with us, so if you'd like to go along on a caboose ride, I welcome you to do so. Please watch your step when touring the train and when entering the caboose. Thank you.